Hi, I'm Megan LaCour with TheArtOfMegan.com. Today we're going to be going over some basic bead stringing techniques. I'm going to be talking to you about crimp beads, bead covers, we're also going to be using bead tips, and we're going to be going over the basics of stringing beads on beading wire. Are you guys excited? Let's get started. Our materials for our necklace today are going to be two sizes of beads. I've got separated here in these ramekins. We're going to need a clasp. We're going to need two bead covers, two crimp beads, two bead tips, and a jump ring. Now I have a second bead or a third bead tip here just to show that there are differences in the style that you can get. This one is your standard bead tip. There we go. Just plain. It's got the little hook on the end. And the ones I'm going to be using today are just a little bit fancier. Let's see if that will focus. It's got a little leaf pattern on it. Nothing too, too complicated. It still works the same way. We still have a hole in the bottom where our beading wire goes through and we still have a cup formation here. These are also called clamshell tips because of the little hinged bottom. You can also find them where they open on the side instead of on the bottom like that. We're also going to be using round nose pliers, our cutters, needle nose pliers, and then our special crimp pliers. Before we get into putting the necklace together, I'd like to talk a little bit about these crimp pliers. Let's see if I can get this to focus in. We have a few different areas on our crimp pliers. Along the back, we have our first step where we actually bring the wire or the crimp bead through first. When you close it, you can see it creates a little bit of a U shape. What that's going to do is it's going to create a notch in our crimp bead so that when it bends around it doesn't break, it doesn't create a heavy stress point and it also is a little bit more attractive than just flattening a crimp bead. A flattened crimp bead is not very secure, it's not very strong because the two flattened areas create a weak point where the necklace can break. Uh, we also have the top here where we've got just a little oval shape when it's closed uh, what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to close our little U-shape created by the one on the back end of the plier without having it be flattened out or anything. It allows us to create a nice rounded out tube. So this is very important because it's going to create a secure necklace. Now let's talk about the crimp beads themselves. If I can get one picked up. We have right here a little two by two tube crimp bead. Now I'm a big believer in always using a precious metal for your crimp beads, either sterling silver or gold. Um, gold filled is fine. But if you're using a plated metal for your crimp beads, they tend to not have as much strength and they end up uh, usually having a stress point in breaking. Now we have our crimp bead covers which when I was making jewelry at first I didn't really know that these were around. I don't even know if they made these when I very first started. I started making jewelry when I was 12 so 15 years ago now. Um, wow. Anyway <laughs> I have these crimp covers that are going to go over the tubed um, crimp beads, the ones that are already flattened around the wire, and that just gives a more attractive appearance. Uh, we also close those with our crimp tool um, in that oval area that allows it to round it down without crushing the bead. Now I have a few different kinds of wire. They're actually the same brand, but I wanted to show you a couple differences. Uh, this is your standard, what you're going to see in the majority of your beading wire. This is essentially just 
um, 49 little strands of wire that are bundled together and then wrapped in plastic. And this gives you a really flexible wire. As you can see, I can twist it, I can bend it. It's not gonna pinch or break. Uh, it gives you a lot of strength and a lot of flexibility. I highly recommend using either this brand, which is AccuFlex, or I also like SoftFlex. Um, but there are a couple cool things that you can find within these wires. So this is just our standard stainless steel coated in clear plastic, which is what I use for the majority of my jewelry. But we also have white, and there's also black. So you've got some options where if you have wire that's going to be exposed or if you want to have a floating pendant or things along those lines, then you can actually use this type of coated wire and you're still going to have the strength of the multiple strand necklace. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and put the colored ones off to the side for now because we won't be using those today. The first thing that we're going to do is wind off 18 inches of our beading wire. This is going to give us a necklace that is approximately 16 in inches finished because you'll have about an inch and a half on either side that ends up being slack for working in your ends. Now I've got that measured out, I'm just going to clip that end off and since this wire is really flexible I don't want it to get tangled up and I also don't want it to all reel off so I always make sure that I pull it back into its place here. Um, the new little containers are kind of cool because they're a little dome shape so the wire doesn't escape as easily. Now that we have our length of wire cut, we're going to start by creating a little knot about an inch, and a half, inch to an inch and a half down our wire. Now this wire doesn't like to hold a knot very tightly, so you just want to pull kind of hard and just do a second standard overhand knot right on top of it and just pull those tight. Now it's not that big of a deal if they loosen up a little bit because they are going to be kind of forced in this position in just a moment. So just make sure that you can get it nice and tight and then fold the wire in half there at that knot. Next you're going to pick up your bead tip. You're going to run your wire through the hole at the very bottom. Which I'm going to open this up just a little bit with my pliers. Looks like there's a little bit of a finish left in there. And then that second end is just going to follow down that bead tip hole with the length of the wire that we're going to be using for the majority of our necklace. Okay, now we're just going to sl slightly pinch this closed for now and we'll tighten it up the rest of the way in a little bit. After that we're going to string our crimp bead over both ends of the wire. And slide that right up to that base. Leaving a very, very small amount. It's okay to have a little bit of space left there. We're going to pick up our crimp pliers and you can see the back end has that little groove. I'm going to rest the bead in that groove. Let's see here. Can we see that okay? And then I'm going to just slide that up, squeeze that down. And that's going to create a little fold right there. There we go.